Namaskar and very good afternoon to all of you. Very, very happy to have this opportunity. This is the second time I'm here. A few months back I was here and we spoke about calm amidst chaos. And this is the second opportunity. So calm, uh, today's topic is work-life balance. So this topic, work-life balance, do you think it is possible? You can say whatever you feel. Is it possible to have work-life balance? Tough but possible. Okay. Get to experience it. So what do we mean by work-life balance? Is it that life is divided into different compartments and then there are there is work part of it, then there is family, then there is friends, then there is my own self. <clears throat> Life is divided into different compartments and I need to balance all the different roles. Is that one understanding of work-life balance? <clears throat> Generally one thinks that is what it is, that different aspects of my life must be in balance along with my work. There should not be a lopsided growth. There should not be workaholism where I am fully doing so much of work that I don't have quality time <clears throat> with my family, with my friends. There is no quality time for me to spend for my own uh, personal growth. <clears throat> How to balance all these? So generally this topic work-life balance is understood in this way to balance all different roles of life. Do you know when this term was coined? Sometime in the 1960s this term came about. The situation in 1960s in US and the situation today here and across the world has changed tremendously. So let us see what is modern life. I came across some humorous depiction of what is a modern life. <clears throat> I'll start with that. Our communication is wireless. Our business is cashless. Our telephone is cordless. Our cooking is fireless. Our youth are jobless. Religion, creedless. It's a fashion to say I am spiritual, not religious. Our food, very important, fatless. Education, valueless. Faith, I don't believe in God. Our labor, effortless. Conduct, sometimes worthless. Our cricket, consistencyless. Our relationships, loveless. Attitude, chalta hai, careless. Feelings, Heartless, politics, shameless. So what is the result? Follies are countless, arguments are baseless, commitment is aimless, life meaningless, and finally existence useless. If we see this description of the modern life, there is a lot of development which has happened. Our standard of living has gone up tremendously. Comforts and conveniences that we have today were not available earlier. And what we find that though the standard of living has gone up, much more comforts and conveniences we have today. At the same time, there is tremendous increase of stress, worry, tension, anxiety, all that. So what is very important is that along with the standard of living, the standard of life also goes up <clears throat> and the standard of life is the vision that we have, the values that we have, the purpose for which we do our work. That clarity is the spiritual insight that we must have. <clears throat> so Swami Chinnamji used to give us a very nice analogy that if there is a boat, there is a mast on the boat and a sail is tied, the boat moves ahead. The mast is visible, but 
below the water what is be below the boat the keel is not visible to the people the higher the mast is the deeper is the keel that keeps the balance same way the higher is our standard of living the deeper has to be our standard of life and when both these integrate then the balance comes into us in our life so earlier days there used to be clear cut divisions between work time family time so that compartmentalization was possible and so that top the, the term was called work life balance so 9 to 5 let us say the job after 5 there is family time there is personal time again next day morning one comes back at 9 o'clock but today with the technology available we are almost at call all the time because the phone is there when we are at work many times we are doing things at home personal work when we are at home many times there is office some urgent call something has to be done then one is managing that so these boundaries have become blurred so instead of compartmentalizing life and trying to balance all different aspects of life one has to look at life in a completeness so our guru ji swami tejomayan ji gives a very beautiful set of equations where he says that action minus vision is equal to division when i act but i don't have the clear vision then there is division in a family if they don't have a vision of one family then there is a division ramayana and mahabharata are examples of that kauravas des and the pandavas they felt they both are one family but they felt they are opponents <clears throat> so when there is no vision of oneness same way in a company if everybody has the same vision that we belong to this one company we are here to make this difference then there is unity if there is division psychological divisions action minus vision will only create division <clears throat> even in our own country the feeling that we are one as a country states each one wants their own freedom independence so many people don't even want to associate with india so the vision when it is not there action minus vision will only create division vision minus action big big talk this should be done that should be done these are the goals these are the targets this should be our dream this should be our vision but nothing happens vision minus action is equal to imagination but vision plus action is equal to transformation so what is the vision that we have as individuals as a organization as a country when there is a deeper vision and centered in that deeper vision then we are able to go out and act that creates a transformation <clears throat> positive transformation which will impact the individual as well as the whole community so when we come together for any common purpose and everybody is inspired then the work that happened there is synergy there is team work there is harmony and the person achieves what has to be achieved and there is happiness also so success and happiness both are achieved in that case because there is a deeper vision with uh, efficient action leads to transformation and success so what is this deeper vision that we speak about in the 18th chapter of the gita it is called as an all inclusive vision satvik vision so those of you who know the gita satvik vision rajasik vision tamasik vision so a narrow vision is divisive one thing only about i me and mine that is called small aim thinking only about i me and mine a broad vision is expansive where one thinks about a higher purpose making a difference to the society thinks about community the country but the supreme vision is all inclusive where i don't compartmentalize life everything is seen as one whole i am one individual who has all different roles to play i i am an employee here i am a father at home i have i am a brother i am a spouse different different roles i have and instead of compartmentalizing and trying to do justice of for each role i as one individual if i look at myself as a whole and try to play the roles by empowering myself as an individual the rest of the things will happen beautifully so that's what the gita says that look at life as a whole and live a whole life 
Otherwise, we compartmentalize that. Okay, one part of life is work, one part is relationship, one part is family, one part is friendship. No doubt those divisions exist, but if I divide like that psychologically, I will always feel that, you know, I am giving so much time in work, I am not able to do justice at home. When I am at home with the family, then I feel, oh my God, so much work has to be done. So my mind is not where I am. Because the conflicts of the roles constantly occupy the mind. So first thing to be done is not to divide like that psychologically that this, I have so many entities and I have to play so many roles and I have to balance so many roles, one at the cost of the other. Balance is like that. So what they say nowadays is work-life balance is not possible. It is going to create more stress in our lives. Instead, we should try to do work-life integration. Where all different aspects of life are integrated into one whole. They are not opposed. It is not work or family or friendship or me time. It is not like that. I as an individual, so nowadays what has happened in the corporate companies also we see. Facilities are provided. So there is a gym which is there, there is a prayer room, there is a yoga room, there are opportunities for recreation, relaxation because this compartmentalization has to go. The individual as a whole, if the individual is handled, then that person will be efficient even at work, at family, everywhere, in personal life, everywhere. And hence, work-life integration or work-life harmony is the new term. Because as time changes, so many boundaries are blurred and things merge into one whole. Which, what, which is what Vedanta has been saying for many many days, many many years that look at yourself as one complete individual. To look at oneself as one complete that is called yoga, integration. To look at oneself as different different compartments that is VO, disintegration. <clears throat> Here is one small clip from You know the founder of Amazon, Jeff Bezos. They asked him about work-life balance and you see what he has to say. This is cool. My view is like how do you go about establishing that work-life balance that everybody you know talks about and thinks about? You've got you know, I mean, you live a big life, right? I mean, how do you? How do you? I get this balance question it. a lot. I get it. I teach um, senior executive uh, kind of leadership classes at Amazon for most senior uh, uh, executives, but I also teach, or not teach, but I also speak to uh, interns, so kind of all across the spectrum. And I get this question about work-life balance all the time from, from both ends of the spectrum. And the, my view is I don't even like the phrase work-life balance. I think it's misleading. I like the phrase work-life harmony. Because I know that if I am energized at work, happy at work, feeling like I'm adding value, uh, part of the team, whatever energizes you, that makes me better at home. It makes me a better husband, a better father, and likewise, if I'm happy at home, it makes me a better employee, a better boss, all the things. It's not about, it's not primarily about there may be crunch periods where it's about the number of hours in the week, but that that's not the 
Well, that's not the real thing. Usually it's about, do you have energy? <clears throat> and is, the, is your work depriving you of energy, or is your work generating energy? And you know, there are people, everybody in this room knows people who, who fall into these two camps. You're in a meeting, and the person comes in the room. Some people come into the meeting, and they add energy to the meeting. Other people come into the meeting, and the whole meeting just plays. And those people just, they, they, they drain energy from the meeting. And you have to decide which of those kinds of people you're going to be. Are you going to add energy? Um, and the same thing at home. And the same thing at home. And it's a, so it's a wheel, it's a cycle, it's a flywheel, it's a circle, it's not a balance. Because a balance, that's why that metaphor is so dangerous, because it implies there's a strict trade-off. And um, you can be out of work, have all the time for your family in the world, but really depressed and demoralized about your work situation, and your family wouldn't want to be anywhere near you. They would wish you would take a vacation from them. And so it's not about the number of hours, not primarily. I suppose if you went crazy with, you know, 100 hours a week or something, yeah, uh, maybe, maybe there are limits. And I think I've never had a problem, um, and I think it's because both sides of my life give me energy. And I, I, that's what I would recommend. That's what I do recommend to interns and execs. Right. So why did he say that if the mind is happy, if the mind is energized, if the mind is inspired, the same person is doing work at home also, is doing work in the company also. If that person manages himself well, there will be harmony in everything that that person does. So essentially life management comes down to managing oneself and self-management. If I as an individual can empower my mind and keep myself inspired, I will be able to Harmonize every aspect. I will be a good husband, I will be a good employer, I will be a good you know, father, friend, everything. So self-management is what Vedant always speaks about. That if I can manage myself, there are different aspects of my personality and if these can get integrated, rest of it will happen by itself. So at three different levels we will see about it because we have three different equipments. First is the purpose. Why do we all work? What's the main motivation for us to work? Livelihood. livelihood, yes, no doubt. First thing is livelihood and money. What else? Any other reason, motivation for us to work? Social security. Social security, wonderful. <coughs> Sorry. To learn. to learn, yes. Any other purpose? Yes, definitely. When I achieve success, there's a sense of achievement, and then I feel good about it. Anything else? Sorry? Existence. So that's the livelihood aspect. For survival, for existence. Right. Sorry? To remain fit. Yes, as the body requires exercise, the mind requires work. To keep ourselves sane also, it is very important. So for success, for accomplishments, to channelize our talents, to make a difference to the society, mm -hmm. to manifest our potential. Different reasons, different people have to work, to realize an ideal that I want to make a difference in the society, achieve this ideal, make the lives of people better. But ultimately we all work for happiness and love. If something cannot make me happy, that is where the stress, the difficulties, the anxieties, they all will start piling up. We work for happiness and the path towards that also must be enjoyable. Mm. And hence in Vedanta we always say that work is love made visible. When I express the love which I have, I choose a work which is according to my core competency. I have a deep interest in that and I am able to apply myself to it. Where there is mm. a satisfaction that one derives, 
that person, as he said, you know, the CEO, he said that when I feel energized at work, then when I go home also I am a positive person. And that family feeling, the bonding, love, etc. makes me energized more. So when I come back at work also I am an energized person. So this harmony is what we seek. That in the mind is there a certain love, a certain deeper motivation which I am expressing through my work. Otherwise it is labor that I am dragging myself through the whole day somehow. You know it is said there are two types of people who get up in the morning. First type of person who gets up in the morning, he says, oh good God, morning. Again, I have to go for work, again, I have to handle the files, again, I have to handle emails, customers, oh my god. One dreads it. And that's why it's called Monday morning blue. Because Sunday one has enjoyed and then Monday again one starts. So first person who gets up says, oh god, morning. But the second person who gets up, he says, good morning god. It's a beautiful day, fantastic opportunity. Let me begin a fresh day to achieve abundance, to achieve knowledge, to achieve freedom. You know in our culture there is a beautiful way in which we begin our day. There is a shloka which we generally teach our children. Karagre vasate lakshmi karamule saraswati karamadhyetu govinda prabhate karadarshana. That at the tip of my fingers is lakshmi, at the base is saraswati, in the center is govinda. I begin my day by this darshan. What does this mean actually? That I have opportunity to create abundance, wealth, to gain knowledge, to gain freedom and ultimate peace. Every single day I have a new chance. How beautiful positive prayer it is to start the day. But based on this I created a new shloka for our modern life. How does our day begin? Kara Grevasate Facebook, Karamule to Twitter, Kara Madhye to email, Prabhate phone, Darshanam. Our day begins with the phone, our day ends with the phone. Full day one is hooked on to the phone. Nothing wrong in it by itself. But the mind doesn't hook off. Constantly it is engaged there. So when I have love in my heart, I begin the day positively. That is a harmony that I create in myself. So Vedanta says work out of happiness and not <clears throat> for happiness. Constantly when I keep myself happy and I am working out of that sense of happiness and love, I become a better performer also. I enjoy my work. There is energy around me. People are there who can support. More positive I am, more I am able to motivate others and inspire them. Get the work done. So many times we believe that when I am successful I will be happy but it is the other way. When I am happy I will definitely be successful. Work life balance comes when I change this thinking. We have we put so much of hard work into our work, work, work because we feel only when I become successful in work then I will be happy. There is a person called Sean Aker who did his research and he wrote a book called Happiness Advantage. And the whole conclusion of that book is this one simple line that when I am happy then I will be successful and not the other way around. So how do I keep myself positive and inspired? Find what I love. Do things which will make my mind calm and quiet, which will not agitate, which will not create excitement where the mind gets disturbed. So a calm mind is a happy mind and a contented mind is a happy mind. Again the question of work life balance comes when we feel that if I am discontented then I will achieve more and that is also the cause of a lot of stress. Contentment we generally equate to complacency that if I become contented then how will I progress in life. But that is not contentment. Complacency is different. It is a state of idleness, dullness, laziness. Contentment is a sattvic state, it is a state of creativity, it is a state of knowledge, it is a state of innovation. When the mind is calm, when the mind is happy, content with what it has, new new ideas come up. An insecure mind can come up with a few, but a contented mind will come up with much more. So there is a world economist called Angus Madison and 
he did the research on economics of whole different economies of the world, <coughs> India, China, etc. He did, and what he found that till 18th century, the competition was always between India and China. They were controlling almost 33 to 35 percent of the GDP each, and competition was only between them. After the Industrial Revolution, many things changed. But interesting research about India is whenever in India national knowledge was at its peak, prosperity was also at its peak. Which is what our last verse of the Gita says: Wherever there is Krishna and wherever there is Arjun, there there will be prosperity, fame, success. Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna, Yatra Partho Dhanuta. Tatra Shri Vijaya Bhuti Dhruva Nitir Matirma. So this contented mind along with dynamism to act, that is a combination which brings the harmony that we speak about. So that the mind which is contented is happy even at home, is not insecure, is not doubting, is not constantly worried, is a happy mind performing to its potential. <clears throat> and that is what it is, creativity, efficiency, smartness, all these come. How to make this mind happy is what spiritual knowledge is all about. How to make the mind calm, how to make it single pointed, how to find one's own passion. So Swamiji used to tell us when the mind is calm, the thinking is clear and sharp, actions are efficient and brilliant. One example of that from the epics is, do you believe that Arjun was a hard working person? Yes or no? Was he a skilled person? Was he a very focused person? Was he an efficient person? Was he a good person? He followed values? And yet, when the day came where he has to fight the war, what happened to him? That mighty warrior who can shoot with both his hands, who can shoot when blindfolded, who was the best archer of the time, started shivering, started trembling, he couldn't hold the bow, he fell down from the chariot. He was at the feet of Sri Krishna, crying, saying, I don't want to fight this war. He had tears in his eyes, Ashrupuna collection of it is said. So, it, what happened to that mighty warrior? He was an efficient person, good person, strong person, hard-working person, everything. Still he collapsed and when the Gita, the knowledge of Gita was given to him, he changed, transformed. Same person picks up his bow and arrow, becomes dynamic, goes ahead, does his duty, wins the war. What did the Gita do? The mind which was agitated, the mind which was disturbed, it made the mind quiet. Swamiji used to tell us that in the exam the student is wise, before the exam, the student is wise. After the exam, the student is equally wise. But in the exam, the student is otherwise. All the questions that one has learnt and come, suddenly a few answers one forgets. The mind gets very disturbed. So the secret of balance is always, how do I keep my mind inspired? How do I keep my mind calm and positive? And that's where the culture tells us about the big picture of life. That we pursue wealth, we pursue happiness, we enjoyment, we pursue values, but that is not enough. Arjun had all the three. He was an efficient person, he was a successful person, he was a skilled person, he was a good person, but it is not enough just to be good in life. It is very important to be spiritually good in life. Spiritual knowledge is the strength which anchors the mind, which makes the mind calm, which makes the mind inspired. And that person who seeks that spiritual freedom, that we call as moksha, the goal of life, that I want to be happy every moment of my life. Moksha is not freedom at the end of life. But moksha is the freedom that I experience every moment. A beautiful quote of Swamiji is, moksha is not freedom from action, it is freedom in action. While acting, how can I be free from stress, worry, tension, anxiety? How can I be inspired? How can I be free from ego, free from attachments? Then I am free right now. And my work is a means to that freedom. Otherwise that same work becomes a means for stress, worry, tension, anxiety, so much. So at this point, one small activity we will do. I need three volunteers. 
quickly any three volunteers can come up. One more person. Please take the mic each one. Okay. So this activity is very simple. It will have different rounds. Yes, so the different rounds which we have. In the first round, each of you have to sing a song for 30 seconds. Any song, except national anthem. Any song. Look, Jana, Nahi, Tu Kahi Haar Ke. You can also join them. Kato Pe Chal Ke Milenge Rai Bahar Ke. O Rahi, O Rahi, O Rahi, O Rahi, Suraj Dekh Jukaya Hai. तेरे आगे रूप गया है जब कभी ऐसे कोई मस्ताना निकले है अपनी धुन में दीवाना <laughs> so Baba flagship, Baba flagship. Have you got any wood? Yes sir, yes sir. Three bags. I'll stop. I'm okay. I'm stressed. No problem. Yeah. Okay, so the second round is what you just sang. Same thing you have to sing, but you sing it together. At the same time we start. When I say start, all of you sing whatever you sang. But together we will start at the same time. Start with your song. No, no, not one by one. Simultaneously, simultaneously together. Oh, okay. You have to sing yours, he will sing his, she will sing hers. Okay. One, two, three, start. Yes, sir. Yes, Right, thank you. The last one. 
Last round is simple. Three of you together decide any one song. It could be any new song also or any one of these songs. Together you will sing the same song. <laughs> सुलग सुलग जाए मन मिले आज इस मौसम में लगी कैसी है मुकीर सावन सुलग सुलग जाए मन मिले आज इस मौसम में लगी कैसी है मुकीर सावन So there are different learnings, as he said. You know, when we really love to do something, then the mind is not stressed out. That is one aspect. It takes a lot of courage to come up and sing. It is said, you know, the biggest fear is fear of death, and after that, it is fear of public speaking. So one aspect is that even at work, stress comes because we are we don't enjoy doing it. When we enjoy it, naturally we will. Love to do and we will be happy to do. Second aspect is three of you were there. And when three of you were singing, like somebody said cacophony, three of you are singing together at the same time, so much of chaos is there. In our life also there is so much of disharmony in our life when there are different different roles and we try to play all of them differently at the same time. But the third round when you decided to sing one song and everybody integrated and one song one sings that integration brings a harmony as a whole when we are able to perform the activity was meant for that thank you very much in each of us there is a body there is a mind there is an intellect there are three aspects of our personality and we may have vision, we may have values, we may have goals, ambitions, many things which we have and we achieve our success also. But there is still a feeling of emptiness, there is something lacking, I am not feeling very fulfilled. Because the body, mind, intellect, they are not aligned. This aligning of the body, mind, intellect, where I am, the mind loves to do that work, the intellect feels satisfied out of that work then there is alignment of body, mind, intellect. This is actually called yoga. A yogi is one who has aligned the body, mind, intellect. It's not about doing asanas alone. That is one method. Where I can keep all the three together, body, mind, intellect together, there that person derives so much of joy out of that work. That person works as an integrated whole. The person doesn't dissipate energies. Otherwise we work only with one part of our personality. Either with only the body and the mind and the intellect is not deriving any satisfaction. There is no challenge in the work. There is nothing intellectually satisfying. Or there is no love for that work. I am somehow doing it because I need to do it. Or at the physical level, efficiency is not there, skill is not there. If all the three come together, that is called Swadharma. Where I do what I truly love and I align my body, mind, intellect. So in spiritual life, in spiritual terminology, when we say NBA, what is NBA? Mind, body, alignment. 
If I align this mind and body properly, then the best performance comes out. And that's what Gita did to Arjun. Externally he is very skilled, but his emotions overwhelmed him. So he was very stressed out. Intellectually he knows he has to fight the war. But his mind is not cooperative. They are in different directions. He had a conflict. What he values, what he loves, there is a conflict. To harmonize this is what is called as yoga. And that's what is the life harmony that we speak about and that is what will bring about the balance also that we need. Hence you must have heard this, you know, do what you love and love what you do. If both these are done, if I really do what I love, what I am made for and what I am doing, I also love that. Because not every time I will be able to do the whole day whatever I love. There may be things which I don't exactly love what I may have to do but I start loving those things also then there is harmony in the mind there is no conflict there is no agitation that person performs very well second aspect is when I perform I must be able to enjoy the process happiness is not a destination it is in the journey you must have heard for that I must slow down and to slow down what is important is to learn to do one thing at a time Many times when we speak about this work-life balance, we have many many things to achieve, so we go into multitasking. But today we know, psychological research is done, we know that every time we indulge in multitasking, we are actually creating more stress. Because we are not wired for multitasking. So psychological research says one hour of focus is equal to three hours of multitasking. By any chance you have a paper and pen, if you have, or if you have a phone, there is a small exercise that you can do, to directly just now know, all you will require is to write something and you require a stopwatch to time it, timing is required. So when you start the exercise, you have to start the stopwatch, when you complete the exercise, stop it and mark how much time did you take, whether you write on a paper or pen or you do it on a phone, whichever way. So the exercise, first part of the exercise is very simple. You listen, when I say start, then you start. You have to write a sentence, multitasking is the greatest lie. What is the sentence? Multitasking is the greatest lie. And then below that you have to write numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4 till 27. So this is the task, one sentence and numbers from 1 to 27, this is what you have to write. So your time starts now, start and when you complete 27, press stop. Done? How much time will you take? 40 seconds. 40 seconds. Okay. Anybody else? 44, 28. How was it simple to do? Now the second part of the exercise, you have to do the same thing. But same sentence, same numbers you have to write. But one alphabet, one number. So you write M below that one. U below that 2, L below that 3, T below that 4, start and time it. Done? Yes. How much time did you take this time? 3 minutes. Much more? This was more stressful or the earlier was more stressful? 
Second one. Why do you think this was more stressful? <laughs> One is okay, we are not used to <laughs> Because of arrangement to it. Certain type of arrangement, yes. But actually what we are trying to do, if you write sentence and fully focus on the sentence, you write faster. But if we switch between the sentence and the number, though it is the same sentence and same numbers, the mind takes more effort. So what they have, like this there are many exercises, with this they prove that actually there is nothing called multitasking that we do, we do what we call as switch tasking. We switch, suppose we are eating food and watching television, our attention switches between eating and watching, it is not that I am doing both things at the same time, I am not doing. Only 6% of people are capable of doing multitasking where the brain will not Reduce his attention from either of the tasks. It will be fully attentive on both. Majority of the people will do what we call switch task. And in this switching is where the mind dissipates a lot of its energy. If it does one thing at a time, it will take lesser time. It will do it more efficiently and there will be much more error rates will be much lesser and much more happiness. So here is one example. and it takes you twice as long to do the same task. Listen to what Tim Jenkins has to say. He's the co-founder of Point B, a leading business consulting firm. Well, I think there's a fallacy out there that the folks that can multitask are more effective. There are times when it's just important to focus on one thing. I think we also get, need to get permission to check out, to check out of the communications network temporarily to get things done. Because when you're always on, when you're always online, the whole is distracted. Right? The brain world is telling us that that is a very unproductive mode of being. And so the always online organization is actually the always unproductive organization. So this is a very simple demonstration to just show that how multitasking makes us actually very less efficient, drains our energy. So when we speak of work-life balance, the harmony in life comes when I am able to do one thing with full attention. And hence for some time, what they call nowadays digital detox is important. If I am doing something important, I am not uh, or engaging in anything digital. No online, no Facebook, no email, no notification. For some time at least so that my mind is fully into it. Which is what in our culture we call as ekadrata, single pointedness. Vyavasayatmika buddhihi samadhav na a mind which is dissipated, will not become single pointed, cannot get absorbed, will always be stressed out. So Swamiji always used to tell us who is a yogi, who brings the mind into the present, bring the mind where the hands are. Gradually the work becomes excellent. Excellent work shall produce excellent results. We cheat ourselves from our successes by our untitled dissipation of the mind in our over anxiety for the fruits thereof. Krishna is giving a tip to Arvind. 
Here is a wonderful thing for you to achieve. And in achieving, do your journey. Fight out the battle. Then every arrow go and hit the point that you want to make. Don't worry about the future. Don't deny me that their army is long as larger than our army. This is a don't dissipate and, and distract your mind. Keep your mind to calm, sorry. Your anxiety must be big, sorry. It's a go. Learn to work thus with your mind where your hands are working. We don't do it. We work with our hands, our mind is wandering all over. So the hand that is working is a mindless hand. Mindless hand that cannot afford to expect any great results. Hey! Keep your mind where your hands are hung. Be here now and that. We are never here. We are everywhere but not here. Either we are wandering in the past, I should not have done it, I don't know why I do it. Or you are the future, we can get the result exit. You are never here and now. Learn to be here and now. Bring all your mind and your attention in the fairness. There, where the hand is doing a job. The performance will become excellent. The excellent performance will always give you excellent results. Here is a tip for how to achieve excellent results for with your work. Continue. So this is the secret of harmony. Doing one thing at a time, doing it with full attention. And this will happen only when I do even the normal things of life, like eating, talking, walking. As much as I can do one thing at a time with full attention, when I am working my mind will be fully there, when I am with my family my mind will be fully there, which is what today we call as quality time. If you are with the family and the family is not able to get quality time from you and your mind is preoccupied and somewhere else, the family complains, you know you don't spend time with us, even though clockwise you have spent much time with them, but mind wise we are not being with them. Hence very important it is to be where we are, where the body is, where the hands are, where the mind should be. Balance in food, sleep, speech, exercise, recreation and spiritual practice. In the Gita 6th chapter the Lord says that Yukta Ahara Viharasya. How we can balance this? If we are not able to do it clockwise, in a day we have to balance it. Suppose we can't manage how it is that morning 6 I will get up, then I will do jogging, then 8 I will come to work and then Till 5 I will do the work. If that time I cannot do, today a lot of companies they make their working hours flexible. They allow people to work from home sometimes. So many such things are done so that there is a balance overall in one's lifestyle. Because if lifestyle there is no balance, as an individual I am not empowering myself through proper sleep, speech etc. Everywhere there will be imbalance. Then to bring work life balance is not possible. And very important it is to rest. Somehow one thinks that rest and hard work, they don't go together. The example is given of the bow. You know the bow when, the most efficient bow will be one, not which is always strung, where the tension is always tight. The efficient bow will be one which is unstrung. Sometime in the way it is left unstrung, then again the string is tied on the bow. That gives enough strength and flexibility to that string that when the arrow is pulled, it can be pulled much behind and that arrow goes forward. So such a mind is what we need, which can shift between work and rest. And which is where the spiritual principle of letting go comes. Rest is not just physical rest, but mentally how can I drop, how can I let go. Dropping that is important, which we call in spiritual life as detachment. 
that I can be detached from it for some time. When again I need to pick it up, I pick it up, I go and do that work which I have to do. <clears throat> so there are different methods to relax at the body level. Yoga Nidra is there, progressive muscle relaxation. Nowadays there are apps. You know, time out is one app where you can time it. Every one hour it will freeze your screen. So you have to get up, go, take a walk and come back. You can set a duration for how long you want it to freeze. So take certain breaks in between. Go relax, unwind the mind, take a breath break, deep breathing, all that will help. Swami Tejomayananji, he says, don't rest without work and don't work without rest. That's a beautiful way to balance. That we have to switch mentally also between work and between letting go, recreation. This you must have done this experiment quite often that suppose you hold a glass of water how many what would be the weight of that glass of water maybe 200 grams 250 grams but if you hold it for a long time then the same weight will appear as though it is 500 grams or 1 kilo or 2 kilo why because I am holding on to it for such a long time so the longer I hold the heavier it becomes so that's where I have to learn to drop I have to drop certain things at home when I come to work, I have to drop certain things at work when I go home. Some harmony comes then where I am able to let go and be fully in that present. So drop it, don't drag. That mind is a more harmonious and a fresh mind. And finally, be very grateful. When I invoke gratitude in my heart, I count the blessings, I feel positive. I feel energized and inspired by already what is there in my life. When there is no gratitude, my mind always focuses on what is not there, what is yet to be achieved, what is incomplete, what has to be perfected. Then that mind gets very stressed out. So gratitude is a very beautiful aspect. Find at least one thing to be grateful for every day, genuinely, and savor it. The mind will feel positive and inspired. I want to leave you with one formula which is T20. 20 minutes of exercise, 20 minutes of meditation and 20 minutes of study which is any self-help book, spiritual literature, anything that inspires the mind. <clears throat> At body, mind, intellect level if these three are done, either every day or balance it through the week like four days a week exercise, three days a week, you know, study two days a week meditation, anything. An overall balance is struck where a person grows as an individual at all the three levels. Then that person would be a harmonious individual. That person would be able to integrate whole life. Work-life integration and work-life harmony would happen. Thank you very much.